sanctuary was dominated by the world's largest ivory statue to the god Zeus, the god of all gods. But long before this statue was made, another brand of superhero was also making Olympia famous, the Olympic champion. And Olympia would become the most enduring sports arena, not just across the Greek empire, but for centuries afterward across the world. Olympia was the only place where both gods and men were worshiped. In July every fourth year, from all corners of the Greek world, thousands made their way to Olympia to compete in and watch the greatest spectacle on earth. Visiting Olympia was like a combination of going to the most wonderful art gallery, the most wonderful museum, the Super Bowl, and the 4th of July all in one. The Olympic Games began as early as the 8th century BC with a 200-yard sprint. Held to mark a truce between two warring cities, it launched over a thousand years of games. The Olympic Games happened in August, and for months beforehand, it was illegal for any Greek to fight. And anyone who did warlike things during that one month would become accursed in the eyes of Zeus. Every four years, warring states laid down their arms in the name of peaceful competition. As the games grew in importance, the sanctuary of Zeus was transformed into the world's first sporting city with training centers, baths, guest houses, and a stadium which could hold 40,000 spectators. Beneath this arch would run the finest athletes from across the Greek world. The games would decide on just one victor whose reward was honor in the name of the god Zeus. The earliest race was 200 meters long. Later came the 400, then the 5,000 meters, and then there was the pentathlon, running, jumping, wrestling, discus, and javelin. So many of the events of Olympia were versions of war. Men throwing spears, men throwing stones, men racing in hoplite armor and heavy military equipment. Olympia soon grew into a vast sports complex, its buildings designed specifically for each athletic discipline. As Olympia soared in importance, shrines and temples were built to glorify and honor Zeus. But at Olympia, champions were also honored with the first gymnasium, and next door, a school for wrestlers and boxers. But there were other, more unusual events housed in specially designed buildings. A contest for trumpeters and heralds was held at one end of an echo colonnade, an elongated building which could echo each note seven times. There was the Hippodrome, where chariot and horse racing events took place. Each race began with the horses being released from an elaborate starting mechanism called an aphesis to ensure total fairness. The horses raced out into the hippodrome, nearly 800 meters long. An average lap was nearly a third of a mile. The Greek who won at the Olympic Games didn't get a medal of precious metal. All he got was a ribbon around his head, a palm branch to wave around the stadium, and an olive wreath to take home. But his real reward started when he got home. He was allowed his pick of the spectacular heiresses in the town. He'd get a meal, a good meal at public expense for the rest of his life, and over it all, the fame he would be smiled at and pointed at for the rest of his life. The winners were recorded on statues around Olympia. Their names were even used in the Greek calendar. They named their years after Olympic winners. For the Greeks, an event was dated, the year in which such and such won. The games continued for 1,200 years until the Christian emperor, Theodosius, in 394 AD, abolished them as a pagan event. 
Now, the Olympic flame has been rekindled, and every four years, a torch is carried from Olympia to the modern site of the greatest show on Earth. 